Evening everyone, how are you all? Yeah. Ariel literally just brought tears to my eyes. Let's give Ariel a round of applause. <laughs> so, um, my name is Janelle. I like to talk a lot, right? And no, I don't mean like, oh my gosh, you want me here whole evening. But I will be interacting a lot. So if y'all want to come up a little bit, y'all want to come up, let me come close up. Can I see if I don't have my glasses? So y'all can come up if you want. So y'all look very beautiful. I really do agree with Shelly. Yes, and let's give Shelly, Shona, and Cassie a round of applause. That was excellent. I mean, I just, so whole week I've been telling people when they say some things, I was like, you know what I know is a good thing about it? We pray to the same God. So when I have been seeking God all week and then really prepare for you, for, for you all early this morning, and he thinks that God was depositing, and he already knew what three of them was coming to say. So you see how God is working in sync. So I just realized that a lot of the things that he was revealing, he was also revealing to the leaders. And that's exactly how God works, because we, we pray to one God, and definitely his omnipresence is very powerful. Let's, let's give it up for God, omnipresence. He, he shared has a relationship with each one of us all the time. Um, so I just want to open in a word of prayer. Um, let's go, guys. Lord Jesus, we come to you in prayer, God, thanking you so much for today, thanking you so much for each young woman here, oh Father God. We thank you, oh Father God, for each family represented here, oh God. I thank you for their hearts. I thank you for things, oh God, that you have allowed to happen this week. And then today has already begun, oh Father God, just icing on the cake, oh Father God, as we begin to search and reflect, oh Father God, a reflection, oh Father God, a reflection of Father God on who you are in our hearts, oh God. I pray, oh God, that um, I hide behind the banner of your truth, oh God, and I pray, oh God, that your words will be spoken and not mine. And I pray, oh Father God, that um, you will convict us if you have to, oh God, and you go before us always. In Jesus' holy and precious name I pray, amen. All right, so I want you all to greet each other in a way that you haven't seen each other in a very long long time so we know that women are drama queens so i know y'all could do that so even though that's the first time i've seen that friend you better act like you didn't see her till last year so let's go three four oh my gosh and i've seen a long time how you going i like that top oh gosh everybody here and everything i tell you <laughs> nice oh that was good give yourselves a round of applause that was good come on y'all could do a much give yourselves a round of applause that was good I think you all were excellent drama queens there. And the thing about it, what I realized is that everybody started their sense and they say, oh my. <laughs> so that was, no, that was nice. So um, the topic that we have today is her identity. A look into the individuality of a female believer. That's a power topic. And um, when you think about individuality and we think about identity, the first thing that came to me is our names. And some of us will kind of know the definition of our name, correct? Anybody want to share with me? What's the definition of your name? Right? Abigail. Abigail. Oh, Father, source of joy. Let's give Abigail a round of applause. Woo! And I mean, her t-shirt reflects that joy. Hello, it's so pretty, right? Who's next? <laughs> Who's next? If you don't volunteer yourself, I will volunteer you. Okay, Ariel, let's go in. Oh, wow. Oh, could you do that raw? Raw, wow. Lion of God, let's go. Who wants to go next? Oh, Grace. Very nice. And you have a graceful voice. Let's go, Hannah. One more person. One more. Just raise your hand. You know you want to see it. Who wants to go? My friend in the back there. <laughs> oh, well, maybe we could Google it. Lisa. Lisa. How you spell it? Somebody Google it. Quick. What it is? L E. I F E L L. Okay. Today you're finding out. <laughs> I don't have my phone on my so how to do it. Somebody will find it just some. Drum roll. Let's do a drum roll for him. And it's a unique spelling, too. Loading, loading. <laughs> Any? Huh? Oath to God. Let's give her a round of applause. You have a power name. Oath to God. The name that we have 
have a meaning behind it. And sometimes when we reflect it, we reflect, you know, sometimes some persons will be like, okay, that's so out of the blue or that, that doesn't describe me or, or something like that. But, but I stand to be corrected. What I do realize, though, that a lot of persons with the meaning of their names, you can see that they could identify with it in some sort of way. So, like, my name is Jeanette, spelled G-H-E-N-E-R-E. -E -E. I'm the firstborn, and it's God's gift. And um, when I think about it, so my parents would be like, yeah, she's really the gift to us, and I hope that she's a gift to other persons. But when I think about it, you really, you know, you, you, project, is, you, you project and you, you, you walk in, in the alignment with God as a gift to others. But also you realize that when you reflect on the definition of your name or even if you can't find it, you know, you and God could ask because when you are named and you mean it, that's also the foundation that just physically in this world that, okay, that people expect you to identify yourself as, right? And when we think about the word identify, what's the first word that comes to your mind? What's the first thing that comes to your mind? Identify. Identity, sorry, identity. My apologies. Identity. Who you are. Anybody else? You all agree with her, right? Who you are. The real definite, when I say real definition, the dictionary definition of identity is a person's sense of self as of self established by a unique characteristic, the affiliation. So a person's sense of self. That's identity. And that's exact thing when they said who you are, the sense of identity, we realize that sometimes we struggle with that. Anybody ever struggle with the identity? I mean, it's so annoying sometimes when you're like, oh, I think I'm going through identity crisis. We've all been there. Then you hear young persons like, I don't know myself. And then you just realize and all those things. And then to the point that we have accepted that you have to go through a certain time in your life where you have to go through identity crisis. Oh, she's going through identity crisis. She's trying to figure out herself. And we allow or we accept, okay, yeah, go through that journey, make all the mistakes you have to make. It's okay, you're trying to figure it out. Whereas a lot of us who are older, what I want to encourage us, encourage us with is that we would have gone through that moment of figuring it out. But we do not want to accept those seasons where we were trying to figure out what our identity is and then accept what the lies that the enemy is telling us on who we are. And sometimes we find ourselves dealing with a lot of things. So, you know, we have to deal with the whole boy's trouble and you always get in trouble. I mean, I get in a lot of trouble for that when I was younger. And then you realize that some of us who are brought up in Christian homes, we don't want the Christian um, life anymore. I would have gone through that. Or some of us who was not exposed to Christianity when we were younger, now we're kind of tossing and turning. Do I want church? Do I not? Do I want God? Do I not? And then there's a big one that a lot of us is dealing with, and the enemy is coming into the corridors of everywhere to um, tell you the lie that even if you're gay, right? And now people are second-guessing their identity with that. So they have a lot of things, and there's a lot of topics that we don't want to touch on and talk on, but it's real because the identity of who you are, the enemy is trying to now conflict that to let you know that you're actually something else. And even though we accept the fact that we're going through a, a moment of trying to hear from God and to see where we are, what our encouragement here this evening is to let you all know to do not give room for the enemy and his lies and do not accept what he's saying into your mind. Remember, he came to steal and he came to kill and he came to steal that joy. So the very thing that you may be tossing and turning with, whether it's a decision with school, whether it's a decision with who you are or whether it's a decision with your walk with God, remember that he does not have a clue with the plans that God has for your life, right? He tries to make you feel that he knows everything about you, which is a lie. So he tries to conflict your mind to make you believe something against that what God is saying to you, which that you are a child of God and that you are important and that you are enough. But he wants to tell you something else that is not true. And when that happens, it sometimes is like a double-minded Person. We ever hear about that double-minded? And, you know, the word of God in James 1, 8 speaks about a double-minded person. It's an unstable person. Have we ever been double-minded on a decision? It could be simple as what you're ordering from the menu. Okay, should I do pasta today or should I do a burger? Oh, God, I remember that burger the last time. And you don't know. And it's a and you're ready to order. Okay, I'll take this. She's not ready yet. And then like, oh, God, you're so double-minded. But then look at how the word of God describes a 
a double-minded person is, a un un is unstable in all his ways. I mean, that's kind of strong, but it's true. It's true, and you're unstable in all your ways. Like, I would have remembered when I was younger, and I'd have put my parents to sit down and say, you know, Mommy, Daddy, I don't want this Christian life anymore, and I want you to allow me to do this, and I want you to allow me to do that, and I don't want to do this. And you're so double-minded. And then in, in the back of my mind, I'm like, you know, I don't think God, this is what God really wants for me, you know, because what God wants for me has to happen now. You know, all those different things, double-minded, to the point that, I, I, I could not have made a proper decision. So you're unstable, you're inconsistent. It, 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 it even affects your schoolwork. It affects um, um, your commitment to things. When, when people ask you to suffer, you're not finishing projects, you're not showing up, you're not somebody of your word. Because too many times we think it's only our parents think about it, but from young to young, you know, we're talking now, it, it affected me to the point that I thought it was only my Christian walk that was unstable, but I realized that it was being affected all the time. So I started to now become a girl, not of my word. And when it is, again, it goes back to what the word said, is when in that you are double-minded, you're unstable, and it has a ripple effect in even with your friendships. Your friend, I tell you, you have to bring the ice to the party. You forget the ice because you're so, you're sunny and Ryan. I'm just calling the name, I'm sorry if anybody have a Ryan here, right? So you were real sunny, right? Because you're unstable, you're double-minded, you're either in or you're out. Well, you know, that's a whole message about lukewarm, right? But we understand, we have to be very careful. And all of that comes for us giving too much way for the enemy's lie on telling us on who we are with our identity. So we have to be very, very careful where that is concerned. But when we think about a female believer, like, I just want to commend you all on that topic because I think it's really one of a kind and it really came from God because I, I haven't seen like a youth group or <coughs> a woman's ministry specifically calls it out and the individuality of a female believer. We'll just be like, okay, talk about that, how we struggle with that, how we do that. But no, how about we tell them how to be a female believer? Then I ask God, I say, okay, God, what is a female believer? You understand? And these words came to my mind, and you could be like, okay, Jen, but you forget this one. So I'm just going to call out some words, and you could call out some, right? When I think about a female believer, I think about somebody who's grounded. Who's grounded. Who's grounded in the word and grounded in who they are. Who's not perfect. But who obeys. But who obeys. And it's something my dad always says, and I, I, I wrote it down when I was preparing. It's called, A Sinner Saved by Grace. And we know what grace is, and grace is so undeserving. And to me, that is what a female believer is. Okay, grounded, Janae, you're talking about grounded. But what grounded mean? You wasn't grounded a long time, so what are you coming to tell us now, right? What does grounded really mean? When you're grounded, it means that the foundation under you is strong. But how that, how that does even happen? How do you reach that place where you're grounded? How do you, but then after grounded, they say not perfect. So I thought ground is supposed to have it. Holier than thou. So we're talking about not perfect. So it makes mistakes and so we're coming to tell me now. Right? That is also a lie from the enemy. So you realize you're going right back because where the enemy targets, he tries to target the identity. Once he makes you question your identity, he can make a question who you are. When you question who you are, you question who God is. If you question who God is, they don't have anything. When you're grounded, and I will answer... On, on, based on my experiences, right? In order to be grounded, you have to be contented. And when you're grounded, what keeps me grounded today is God's reputation in my life. He has never lost a battle. And moments when I thought that that was it, let me tell you, huh? I would have made mistakes that you take, oh, I was 25, 26, somewhere around there, right? I mean, we make, I mean, it makes us right through, but that's specific what I'm talking about now. And I'm like, Jeanne, you're about to lose everything. So, you know, in the marketing world, they will tell you, oh, you take 25 years to build something and a moment, a, rep, a moment, a build a reputation and in one moment, you could lose it all. That was that moment for me. But the reputation wasn't a product, it was me. And um, I saw where God, I faced my consequences, but he forgave me. And it's the grace that we spoke about with God's grace. And look at where I am today with you all in youth fires, which means how could I 
second guess my identity if God's reputation has been victorious. That is what keeps me grounded. So I don't know what keeps you grounded. Um, if we reflect right now on a situation that would have happened, whether it would be something with health within your family or whether it will be something simple in somebody else's life, but it's actually major in your life, which is like your exams and you see how God pulled through for that. Or you would have all also make a mistake and you have seen how God forgave you and he restored you and he restores you back to where you were. But you know, it's, you know that in between. So you have to go through that in between. But God restores you back because that's the kind of God that he is. So God restores you and he forgives you and he gives us grace. And that is what keeps you grounded. What is a female believer? A female believer is saved by grace. Is a sinner saved by grace. But we must reflect on God's reputation. And when you think about God's reputation, it's like remembering, right? And... It's, it's, actually, it's actually like a quote by Maya Angelou. My dad also used it because my grandfather always used it, so you know it too, which is you don't know where you are going until you remember where you were, right? And different persons will have it in different words. But to me, that means looking back. It means remembering. Say remembering. And also, remembering is also reflecting on God's reputation. Now, it has something called a road of calling. So you reflect back on everything that you've been through. So Shauna would have spoken about areas that went where she was and struggling with different things that she would have been through. And then this is who she is today. Why would Shauna be grounded? Because she reflected back on her road of calling. And also, and the Bible, it talks about that. And that's also stones of remembrance. What are some of your stones of remembrance right now? Anybody could call? It doesn't matter. It's just girl talk here. Don't, don't say anything. Whatever in this room stays here. Right? What are some of the things that you could reflect on that God's reputation showed that he is continuously victorious? Anybody? You could say anything. Everything. <laughs> everything. Everything. He's evidence in everything. One more. exams and the anxiety because anxiety happens right before you don't know the outcome of something it's the expectations of what's going to happen so it could be exams it could be waiting back for a response for something it could be an interview it could be a next life decision and you saw how God came through that is your road of calling I challenge you this week write down your road of calling draw your road of calling reflect on your stones of remembrance and these are the things that we want to collect in order to be a grounded female believer. I mean, it's easier said than done, but it reminds you, like, before you make that decision that you know does not reflect God, you're like, but wait, 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 wait. God do deserve this. So one of the questions I was asked, I'm like, is this worth me losing everything? That'd be my first question. Is this moment, <laughs> is this moment deserve me being pushed back? Because you know when God ready, he says, relax. So when you realize that, you, that you're okay, you were going, you were going with God, and God tells you that pause, well, we'll talk about that later on, you know? And these are some of the things that we reflect on to keep us grounded. But in order for us to reflect on the reputation that God has and the stones of remembrance, we must hear the whisper of God. And we even said that also, I know three of them, they were talking about that, and also in the, in the songs and, and the God is so amazing with the type of music that we chose today that in order for you to hear God's whisper, it means that he is, he is close to you because how can somebody whisper to you? Could our friend Joy, Abigail, could Abby whisper to us, any of us here now? No, because she's not close to us. In order for us to remember God's reputation in our life, it's because he whispers to us. In order for him to whisper to us, it means that he is close to us and then when we look about grounded remember we spoke about contentment and contentment what's the first thing comes to mind when you hear contentment hmm, you're quiet boy satisfied just enough you're good you're good right here and and 
how do you get to a place of contentment is when you lean into Christ to know him a little bit more. Right? We talk about the whisper, you learn him a little bit more. There's different characteristics and roles of Christ. So we know that God is a shepherd. He leads us. We know that he is a king. We reverence him. We know that he is also a friend. And we know that he is a father. I don't know for you, but I could talk on for me, and you maybe could be like, yeah, girl, I know what you're talking about. Is that God takes me into different seasons where I learn the different roles of who he is. So one moment I realized that, oh, wow, you feel, oh, God, it's teaching me what it means to, you know, be a daughter of a king, I'm going through that. And then you realize a shepherd, he leading in straight. So you listen, yes, this is where to go. Okay, no problem. Mm -hmm. So you know, understand with that. But then that friend, where you could have that conversation, and something I learned as well, and I'll encourage with you all, Okay, God knows all things, but do not not talk to God about it because you have the comfort. He already know what happened today. I don't need to talk to God about it. Start from scratch. So here what happened, right? So he messaged and I replied like that. But I know I should not reply like that. So what I did is I leave him unseen, right? So this is what happened. So you can help this anxiety, God. So this is what, or this is what happened to mommy. So, uh -huh. so I lie about it. So here what's going on? So I'm sorry and I hope you go before me, right? So at least... So you develop that friendship with God because it shows that dependency on who he is. And we have, God knows which, which is correct because that itself is a message by itself where we have patience, where we wait on God. But there are moments where God works immediately. Like immediately, like within seconds. And that's your friend. You call your friend, kill I feel for some barbecue. Oh, you buy the ranch, you bring it for money. You talk to God. I mean, honestly, he's going to bring the barbecue. But you could talk to God about something immediately. God, this is what happened. Or else, sorry, I make this mistake. What do you think I should do? Could you reveal it in your word? Okay, tell your Psalms 32, 9. You understand? At least you go into there and you realize, okay, I know you're a little upset because then you get a stern Psalms there. You there was able to tell your friend, sorry, your friend forgives you and you all work on it. It goes right back again. That developing that sort of relationship is you getting closer to God where you understand your identity and you reflect based on his reputation. Because the only thing that could keep you to be a grounded female believer is God's reputation. It's his grace and his mercy. And the only thing that really helps you to obey the voice of God is when you realize and understand that you are a daughter of the Most High. And in order for you to believe that you are the daughter of the Most High, is to consistently be in God's way where you fight the enemy's lies. He is not clever. He is not as clever to change his strategies. He comes the same way all the time. So if you know you struggle with something, he's going to come that way all the time. Which means that you have an upper hand. What we mean is that we strengthen that area. So with me, I would have always gotten in trouble because of unequally yoked relationships, right? So I would have fallen in that area a lot of the times. And I would have been in unequally yoked relationships. So what is this? Like, okay, he won't come through there. You know what? He will come through. He will come on um, something else. No, he will always come in that area. And I will always have to strengthen that area in my life. When now, I am so, and you know what? Yes, I could boast on the strength of the contentments of who I am that I know because of God's reputation. I'm not going to fall in that area because trust me, God, mercy in that area that I know God has saved me from a lot that I would not fall in that area. So how I could fall blade, how I could come and stand up and talk to you all about identity and then tomorrow fall in that area after I s speak the word and the truth of God, right? I have to remember, should I remember when that happened and that grace and God saved me based on his reputation? Okay, how could you fall back? What are some, we, we struggle with a couple of things here, right? So we struggle with friendships. We struggle with boundaries. You know you're struggling with boundaries and understanding this is a friend and understand how to manage your friendships. Don't get caught up with your friends too much. Don't get caught up with bad influence. You know, you finish primary school, you're good. Secondary, got to deal with it. Um, tertiary level, you have to deal with it. Work, you have to deal with it. It just grows different and different and it looks different ways. But you have the armor of God, which means that you know how he come in. So you have alert. So my encouragement to you is to remember God's reputation again. But remember that the enemy is not clever to change his strategies. He comes in the same way way you just have to be grounded and you have to be strong and you have to have accountability 
and be vulnerable. You have to be open with the weaknesses because that's one thing I'm very thankful that I, because that's why it's so important. I could just come and tell you, okay, I shall not equally yoke and make this mistake almost lose, ever, lose everything. So you have to develop that way where you have this go to person, kill. Okay, don't say nothing. I know it wrong already, but this is what happened. All right, all right, don't worry, don't worry. Let me pray about it. Let me pray about it. So you realize a struggle in this area. We have a little pride, right? And then sometimes, you have to check yourself as, a, a, as an accountability partner if you have also done anything to make that person not come to you, right? So we have to be very careful on us and the receiving end. Too many times we, we speak and we preach about having an accountability partner, but you, who knows that you are called in that area, what type of accountability partner do you think that God is creating you to be? Are you trustworthy? Do you always give advice based on God's truth? Do you also share your vulnerabilities? Because I don't have like a, a million and one girls can't come and tell me, well, Jen, I struggle in this area, this happened or whatever. So it had this story that I did not plan to share, but I will share it anyway. So one of... Um, I was in an unwe- oh, an equally yoked relationship. Real nice guy. I'm like, okay, that's nothing good. But you know, it's very wrong. Thank God for God's mercy. And um, he was a good guy. And we also had a really good, um, strong relationship going. And there was a moment that we had an argument and he was wrong about something. And um, he lashed me. Right? In my face. I never shared his story publicly, but that's okay. It's girls talk, right? And... Uh, so watch him, I was confused. I was like, so um, I, I would have told him it was over, right? But um, <coughs> that time I wasn't grounded, so my response wasn't, um, you know what I mean, right? So he basically I tell him something that was very rude, right? But he got the point. So I'm not, you know, so you understand, right? So I would have told him or whatever, and then he was arguing, and I said, well, this conversation don't make sense because we are no longer in a relationship. There's nothing to figure out right? And I remember leaving and whatever, I never returned in the relationship, right? Because I don't care. Even though I know what I was doing was wrong and equally yoked, thank God for God's grace, I still had a certain standard that I wasn't compromising in, right? Moved on, um, continued to work, and that's how I started to work on my singleness and my contentment with God. Two to three months later, a girl, a stranger, DM'd me, right? But um, I'm very alert to DMs from, from girls who I don't know, right? So I make sure I respond quickly or whatever. She was like, 11 o'clock in the night, and I am not a night person, I'm a morning person, so God, I was up that night. And she's like, hi, you know, I just wanted to reach out to you. I felt like you were the only person I should have reached out to, and I just want to know that, I was in a re- that I'm in a relationship, and this guy, um, I really love him, and he lashed to me. But I was able to know what to do, right? Because at that moment, we're going to say, well, Gil, huh, you shouldn't be in a relationship. I'll leave him. So, Gil, so that would have happened to me a couple of months ago, right? And this is what I did. Because you have to understand your role and responsibility in other person's life. When you are called to be a leader, it's not easy, you know. Being called to be a leader is not just, okay, you gather up, you understand, we're doing the shares, this is the, this is the songs, what you doing? Um, what, is, what is refreshments? No, 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 no. Being called to be a leader is asking God to preserve you, heal you, because somebody else is depending on your walk with God. So if I had remained with him, what would have happened? What would I have been able to tell? I would have felt like a hypocrite because I'm sure that would have happened in, in some of our lives where people would have come in certain struggles that we're struggling and we don't know how to respond to them because we don't want to be a hypocrite, right? But at that moment, you kill son in the truth because you walk, right? So I'm like, love, walk. And I always say this, <laughs> but I haven't said it in a long time. You are lovable and you will be loved again, greater than ever before, right? It's not the last man on earth, trust me. And it says that we can grow that strength where we could walk. But it's not just saying walk. No, I'm able to tell all the steps that I would have taken, the healing that I would have taken and how you could walk. Because the things that you go through is never for yourself. The things that you go through is always for somebody else. You go and assign that to you because, I mean, when Shelly said about... They the gifts and it's your identity and it's your gift alone. That is not something else. I mean, I'm watching how God just flowed in this message. I didn't even not realize what I was going to say. And then when he talks about the, your gifts and the things that you would have been through, it's for God to take, to shape your identity. 
how could you look like somebody else and both of you all did not go through the same thing that not making any sense the the, the enemy tries to make especially in a world where everything is about your image and about your social media and about your brand and about who you are and about your gifts that you think about to just have this spirit of copycat going around right that everybody have to look the same way sound a certain way whatever as always tell everybody we all have one purpose different assignments so three of us here could have a women's organization okay that's how god is work but you i probably working in talparo and you working in sandy grande okay one purpose different assignment you're assigned to different things but i can't run in sandy grande god don't assign you you get that folder i just imagine we all going into the office sean i get her folder cassie cassie get her folder hannah gets her folder okay no problem one purpose which is to bring honor and glory unto god and to bring others to christ because of the things that I would have been through would have shaped my identity for God to plant my name in your leader's mind to be like, okay, I assign Jen for your, um, for your first, for the women's ministry, right? For the young women's ministry, your first one, and then he will plant other persons because he know who has to go where, right? Because of the things that I would have been through, you all are going through some things now and would have had some stuff that we would have been stuck along the way, right? What is it? rejection negligence comparison your fall or your sin something would have drifted you from when you know that you were in a place where you understood your identity is it social media oh gosh she really wants to talk about social media so she young is it social media where we compare ourselves is it abuse is it something that you try to cover up and now it's bringing back up because God wants you to deal with it. Is it that a family member interfered with you? Is it rape? Is it that vis physical abuse, emotional abuse? Is it that moment of not feeling like you belong? Is it a divorce? Is it something that you said, I don't need to deal with that. I'm okay. But what you did not realize by just ignoring it, have you any place where you are today? You come to church, you know, you'd fire us on fire, right? So you come, everything good, everything flaming on the outside. But the truth is, things are really not going too good for the past couple of months. So if things are not going too good for the couple of months, right now, see, so we're talking about reflection, right? Right now, let's think back a little bit. So remember the road, the road of calling. Let's look back and let's try to remember the day when we started to feel uncomfortable. The day when we started to feel a little off. What happened to make us feel a little off? Somebody say something, somebody trip us off. Who's the person that trip us off? And when they trip, off, trip us off, what was happening? And what came to your mind? And then you realize that sometimes it's the smallest thing that have you in a mood for months now. Or have you not having devotions? Or have you not finished that plan on, on the Bible app? Or have you not listened to that worship song? Because of that one little thing in the past couple of months. Because that little thing is what have you in that stuck moment. Because that is the thing that God wants to address tonight. Sorry to tell you. Because he sent you here. Because he ready for it. He tired. Because he have things for you to do. And that, that really delays some of the things he have to do. And it's something. And the word of God talks about that. I think it's in, in Ephesians. And when it talks about the importance of unity right we talk about unity and we could go in the minutes of, we could go in the moments of we all have to be in one body and all these different things but i also see on the flip side where it talks about also in esther yes in esther when she said when they said well maybe you have been called for such a time as this right we all know it's oh of course it's encouraging yes you call for such a time as this trust my glory i mm -hmm. know i know you're called for such a time as this but if you look earlier it said that's when Mordecai was talking to her, you remember, he was saying that if you don't, God will still deliver his people through the hands of someone else. Oh gosh, yes, Shelley. Correct. Because if you do not go through with that and you don't address what you have to address tonight, it will give it to Rachel. I mean, if I have a Rachel here, well, you know, it will give it to Rachel. He will give it to Rachel. And... It remind me of a campaign I just finished it today called Hugs, Holding Up Girl Standards. God gave me that since 2019. He also gave me in the midst of, you remember the fall I was telling you about, the first, 
the, the first story, right? So that's, God gave me hugs then because I would have fallen, right? I would have fallen in an area that I'm sure some of us struggle with that we don't want to tell our friends, but I will say it for you if you don't want to say it. So I sent something that I should not have sent, right? And I would have faced the consequences for it. And in the midst of my healing and repentance, and um, my question, and I remember asking God, I said, God, mercy, Abba, Abba, mercy. I remember Bruce and Minis, and you know, I was in the living room, I say, Abba, mercy. And, and he said, Jenny, you have to go through it. I said, so what I mean? You're going to expose me or we saving through? I remember that clear. And I remember it was Psalms 43. I, I could be wrong. Psalms 42, I'll check it. And the first line was, vindicate me, O oh God. He said, Jeanette, you're going to read You're gonna read that Psalms until it's over. And the first line was, vindicate me, O oh Lord, prove my innocence. And I said, God, even though I'm wrong, it's all I'm to prove my innocence. And from there, I started to realize really how God's grace is differently. Even though it would have been so many times it would have saved me that specific moment. In the midst of that tragedy and that healing, God would have gave me hugs and he said oh you'll have an event called hugs holding up girls standards so i said okay all right no problem I'll do, oh but you can't do it yet so i was like okay that's 2019 right we're in 2022 it just finished so it's three years later you have to be able to obey the pause right especially when you are when you are custom operating in a certain gift so i know that okay i am called to speak in public so i'll do it but after that God would have given me one, I had to pause everything. And he would have said, Janae, I need you to be buried. And just like our plan goes through germination, the five stages of germination. And then I will tell you when I'm ready to come out. And um, I would have gotten a job in TTT and I'm producing. So I'm like, God, you know how much I like hosting and you put me behind the camera. Da, 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 da. And I was like, okay, I'll, I'll listen. And I learned so much the power of being behind the scenes and what it means to not be seen. Um, to the point that now I'm asking God for me to understand when some persons are not theirs yet. So because I'm like, so he didn't know he have to be buried first. He didn't know he have to listen to so that pause. Why, why, why are you trying to show himself so much? And then the other day, my mom was like, Shin, you remember God takes different things, different seasons. You would have gone through different seasons. So he's not where you are. Or she's not where you are. And I had to learn to obey that pause. Now, if I didn't obey that pause, we would have never met today. Because God works in order. He does things correctly. Because sometimes we're blinded by our own spotlight. And that was a fall that I thought I would never fall in. I'm like, I will never do something like that. But yet I did because we, and we spoke about flesh earlier, right? We put so much confidence in our flesh and not confidence in the word of God and, God and who God says we are. And then three years later, I would have been able to, to do what God assigned me to. But if I, did, if I did it prematurely, it would not have been how it probably was. And somebody else would have had to do that girls campaign. Because God would have to go on whether you're ready or not. And God orchestrated all these leaders. And God sent me here today to remind you all of that one thing that have you drifted. And that one thing that have you on a pause that you can't seem to... Mm, it can't seem to continue because he wants it to be addressed today. In Romans 12 too, it's supposed to be about don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you. The power word today. You heard even when Ariel was doing the opening prayer about the transformation to transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. We open today talking about identity. And I said that the enemy comes to tell you a lie in your mind. So ask God to transform you in a new person by changing the way you think. Then you would learn to know God's will for you. We just said, oh my goodness, look how God working, huh? We just said there's something that we need to transform and there's something that we need to give to God today. Why? So you would learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. You all are so important to God because it seems like Every individual in this room right here has something to do and you already know it. You probably never share it with somebody or you share it with your friend or you wrote it down or only you want God to talk about it or only your dreams or your parents know. That one thing that you think that probably too small, 
that is what God wants you to do. But you cannot get the release to do it until you see about yourself. We have to give God that one thing that has us. Is it rejection? Is it negligence? Is it a heartbreak? Is it a sin that we're struggling with that we're afraid to tell anybody? Nobody here will judge you. Nobody here will judge you. We have all fallen short. But if it's one thing we do not remain, why? Because of God's reputation, the stones of remembrance in our lives. God wants the exact thing that you are thinking about right now. And God wants to refine and prune. So you know what prune? We all know prune. As Christians, we know what the word prune means. And we say it's a lot. Oh God, prune. I think I'm going through a season of pruning right now. You know what a season of pruning is? You know what prune is? Prune is, is, is that moment where God strips you from everything. Strips you, covers you, and he wants to refine you. The big arrow that we saw, because God wants to restore you. God is a merciful God, and he is a fair God. He is not going to ask you to give him what you said. So let's say it's a sin that you're struggling with. You pray about it right now, and because you tell him about it, okay, God don't want anything to do with you. Okay, right, so you tell us about it, no problem. Let's work on this. Let's continuously work on this. Because I have a girl called Cindy, and she's struggling with it, and Cindy's going to message you in two months, but you don't know that. But you're able to say, well, Cindy, girl, I just gave this to God two months ago, and I would have gone through this word, and I would have seen where this person would have helped, would have gone through this in the Bible. So let me help you. Let's talk. Let's meet in Starbucks. Let's have rituals. Let's talk every week. Because your story and the very thing that you're about to, e to exchange here tonight is what God is going to use to shape your identity. My struggles that I have would have been through when I would have left an equally yoked relationship and stand for what I do, shaped me into being the, the, the person that I am today. Now, God would have explain the importance of also being remember he is strong within our weaknesses so i would boast remember what he what it says in the word of god so i'll boast about my weaknesses so god so i just told you all about my weaknesses because god is strong within it and i could stand strong on it because i know god's reputation i am not going to ever look at uh, that's immaturity you understand for you to see certain things but Janae, we went through that what's going on with you because it has certain things that you have to fulfill that god has to fulfill in your life your life is not your own yes you want to do your own thing i know you want to do your own thing but i was sent here to tell you that you cannot do your own thing i'm very sorry if it's bad news to you but trust me in one week is actually good news because what God wants for your life is to happen now it has some people that does backslide you ever heard when they backslide it's fine and in six seven years they are walking to God now right amen and glory to that but it have some people that you don't get it five to seven years and majority of you all are not all of you or probably all of you all inside of here that is for you all because God has some things that he wants you all to do, whether it's in your school, whether it's in your workplace, whether it's in your family, and it starts at home. My dad always says, we definitely want to impact a family because a family impacts a community. When a community is impacted, a country is impacted. When a country is impacted, the world is impacted. And you will think that what you have is probably so small. Janelle, what are you saying? Yes, you have something to offer the world because the world needs what you have. But in order for that to be done, you have to give that to God tonight. Because God is asking you to bring that brokenness so he could exchange it for a whole identity within him. The gifts that he has placed in you is only what's given to you and not somebody else. The, 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 the things that how he has orchestrated you in your mother's womb, the Bible talks about that. He knew you since you were born. They shared on that, the leaders shared on that earlier. He knew you since you were born. The name that you have been given fulfills that purpose that you have to do. Why should we ignore it? Because God's time, he is ready now. Sometimes we feel that expectations. Eh? I remember when I was younger, you feel the expectations is too much. Okay, you come from a certain family, or people expect you to have this certain thing, or because of your role in work, or because of your role in youth group, you being a leader, and you think, too much expectations right now is so a burden. God has assigned you this, but you could work through those expectations because God could remove that heaviness, makes it light because you are not alone. When moments when it's heavy, five weeks, 
are the young leaders to lead. Let me tell you, huh, in that moment where I could have just go into my mood and not be hmm, all bubbly and just like, I'm going to suck somebody right now. No, I could have, you're crazy, I can't do that because I have something that was assigned to me and I have to be like, God, today, I'm feeling a little outside. Can I help her? And immediately when I talked to him, remember we spoke about friendship with God and God boosts you. God boosts you and gives you that continuously to go on. When you feel that it's hard, if some of us are mothers here, it's so hard when you're juggling everything. The children probably don't understand. I mean, we really sometimes we don't understand and it's so wrong for us. But, but God wants you to come and talk to him about that, to exchange that. If some of our sons, if things going on at home, if some of our sons and we pray and we pray on what's happening, if we realize that we, we end up in situations with our friends and we realize that we just want to exchange that God wants it. Remember, I don't know what it is, but God already knows what it is and he wants it and he is ready because he orchestrates it. You're so special. He orchestrated this entire young woman ministry just for you to bring that to him. Just for you to bring that to him. And there's some of us who we know, right? So I want to say something. Your uniqueness in Christ does not blossom until you identify yourself with Christ. So remember, we spoke about gifts. And we would have heard, heard Shelly really zone into that your gift is not what somebody else has. The uniqueness of it. We would have shared that what I am going through and what Cassie went through or what Shona went through is three different things. Right? So how could our identity look the same way? What we went through, God shaped it to be something. Your uniqueness in Christ does not blossom until you identify yourself with Christ. What does it mean to identify yourself with Christ? We spoke about being grounded earlier. One thing to be identified with Christ, and it goes right in to John 3.16. And we know that verse by heart since Sunday school. <laughs> and we know that John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Everlasting life as a female believer. Individuality and identify yourself and your identity as a female believer because God has given us a gift that nobody can take away from us, which is that gift of salvation, which is that gift to be identified because you cannot fulfill that purpose until that moment happens, that you believe that Jesus Christ died and you believe that he was buried and you believe that he rose again. Now, some of us already believe that. But you remember what we spoke about earlier? Something have us stuck a little bit. Something drifted us a little bit. Because we are not perfect. Being a female believer means, remember, that was one of the things? We are not perfect. And the reason why we have to go through those things is because God wants us to continuously depend on him. If God would have given us everything that we needed, we need any God? Do we need Jesus? Especially how we are as humans. But God wants us to continuously come and talk to him. Continuously ask him. God told me to leave my job in 2020 in the middle of um, pandemic, COVID, right? And it was a good job. I love my job, right? And it was, I was permanent. And I was like, okay, no problem. But he said, Janet, when you leave this job, I'm not going to provide for you the way that I was providing for you before. Because when one month is finished, you have to return at that end of that month and come back and ask me, okay, what is next? Because he wanted that continuous dependency. When it says you explain, you all understand what was happening. 2019, you remember the fall. Let's talk about the road of calling. So think about yours, right? 2019, we spoke about that fall. 2020, when he asked me to leave, his, leave the job. And then he would have placed me straight behind the scenes from 2020. And then throughout, I would have been having to pause, remember to be buried as the plant, the five stages of germination. And in 2022, I am here in front of you today. Because what God had to do, he had to make sure and refine and prune. But sometimes he does that covered 
When you think about a sweet potato, a sweet potato is buried in the dirt. It's only the other day for all of y'all, so please forgive me, right? So when I saw where these sweet potatoes come out, I was like, oh my God, that's why they call it ground provision. Sorry, I had a little moment, right? So I was like, oh my gosh. Okay, God, I understand, I understand the whole message. So I saw it. So when I saw the farmer pulled out the sweet potato, I was like, that's what being buried means. That the farmer, which is Christ, pulls us out when we are ready. In my case, it's 2022. I don't know what is your case, but I know God is ready for you to give him that one thing that you have been dealing with because he has some things to do in the body of Christ. So we can play that song. And the thing about it is that God really, really loves you. And we know that we always hear about God loving us. But God really loves you. And God really placed you into the place that you are today for a reason. And that one thing that you're struggling with, or if it's two or three things that you're struggling with, even if it's unforgiveness, that unforgiveness, and you're just saying, I'll just ignore it, I'll be numb. You know, some of us have that attitude, like, it's not saying it doesn't bother me. But then you realize that years later, it needs to be dealt with. Because in a couple of months, somebody's going to come to you with unforgiveness that they are struggling with. And what could you do? Tell them how you were able to give it to God. So tonight, God is asking you to give that one thing to him. Give everything to him because he is ready for it. He has seen how you have been struggling. He has seen how you have been confused how you have been double-minded, how you have been unstable with all your ways. And he wants his girl to be contented. He wants you grounded. He wants you, he wants your foundation strong. He wants to remind you that you have been called for such a time as this. Because what he has assigned to you, he wants it to happen. It's not a coincidence how it's the closing of a year. God ready. He wants to close a lot of things off. God, God wants you to give him a lot of things because God is really raising up a lot of young people eh? in different ministries and different churches all around our nation, all around our world. A lot of young people get any same messages because remember we pray to the same God. It's not a different God. So he's telling youth leaders here. The same thing he's telling you, youth leaders in faith assembly or open Bible or in Sandy Grandi. Everybody gets in the same thing because it's one purpose, different assignments. And God wants, as he closes the year, for you to understand that you are very, very, very important to him. And that little moment of pride or, or feeling ashamed, I think we feel ashamed a lot in here, you know. <laughs> We should not feel ashamed. It probably was hard for me to share and be very vulnerable with you. I don't know you all are going to talk my business. I don't know. But you know what? My trust is in God so much that I don't have to fear. The enemy could probably make that come in my mind. It wouldn't even come in my mind. Because I know I was supposed to share it because somebody here was supposed to hear it. So I just want to ask you all to stand. And I want us to reflect. We've been doing a lot of reflecting today. And God is definitely tugging in your hearts. God pulls us away from the noise into the quiet for a reason. God pulls us away because he wants to whisper to you. What does it mean when God whispers? It means that he is near. Maybe God has been trying to whisper and you're thinking God has not been talking to you because you are the one who have drifted. Sometimes you think that it has some things that you probably are above and you're probably blinded by your spotlight. And you think that when we talk spotlight, it's only those who are called for public ministry. But spotlight also could be also that spirit of pride of that moment of not wanting to confess. But God is strong within your weaknesses. 
He says that you all are more precious than rubies, that he has handpicked you for such a time as this. For you have called to be queens for such a time as this. 